In January of 2021, Dan Coons, the creator of the PS1 Digital and the DC Digital, was joined by Chris2600 and Woozle to create a new company called PixelFX. This new company has teased a bunch of new HDMI mods, but the first mod that's been available for purchase is the N64 Digital. The N64 Digital is an HDMI mod that can output up to 1080p and has advanced features such as de-blur, scan lines, and firmware updates over Wi-Fi. Fortunately, I was able to get one, so I'm going to show you how to install one on my childhood junk green N64. Before we go ahead and open up the N64, let's check out what's in the package from PixelFX. First you're going to have the actual N64 digital mod, and in the little baggie you'll have a bunch of other stuff. You're going to have this big flex cable which is for the RCP chip. You'll have this little flex cable which is for the analog wiring. You're going to have this little 3D printed piece which is a spacer if you're going to do the cut version of this mod, and a little piece of foam that goes over the analog pins after we're done soldering them. In my install, I'm going to be using these no cut pieces from LaserBear which I highly recommend recommend. Let's go ahead and disassemble the N64. First we've got to take the expansion pack out. I'm just going to use a little flathead screwdriver underneath the front edge here. Kind of push up gently. Be careful not to scratch anything. Go ahead and pull it out. Now let's flip it over and we're going to use a game bit to unscrew the screws on the bottom of the case. Then we're gonna pull the little feet off, carefully flip it over and make sure we can get all our screws and take the top shell off. We're gonna unscrew this screw here and these two screws right here. And now a bunch of screws around the outside edge here. These two little screws on either side of the expansion card slot and these four screws on either side of the AC adapter plug and the multi-out. Now we can pull the top heat sink off. And finally, we could pull the board out of the case. Well, we've got the bottom shell here. We can actually get rid of these metal pieces here because we're not going to need them. Now we can remove this bottom shield here and get rid of this tube because we're not going to use it. Now let's go ahead and solder the RPC flex cable. I'm going to be using this bent tip on my soldering iron for this flex cable soldering. Turn the N64 like this. We're going to be soldering this flex cable starting at pin 6 on the RPC chip. So if we start at 1 here, we're going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and that's where this little white dot indicates pin 5. And then we're going to start at 1 pin over from this white dot. First things first, I'm going to add some liquid flux to the right side here. I'm going to put a tiny bit of solder on my soldering iron. Go ahead and line up the flex cable so that it's in front of the pins here on the RPC chip. And then go ahead and tack down this right side. You don't have to worry about being super clean yet. We're going to clean that up later. Now that we have the right side tacked down, let's add some more flux on the left side. Go ahead and clean your tip and then add some more solder. And line this left side up and then we're going to tack it down with some more solder. Now with the right side and the left side tacked down, we're gonna add a bunch more flux in the middle here, add a little bit more solder to the iron, and just get some flux down on these pins in the middle. If you end up with a big blob of solder like I did here, you can just use some solder braid and heat it up a bit. It looks like I keep having a problem with too much solder. Maybe this might be lead-free solder here, kind of not mixing well with my leaded solder. So I'm gonna keep using my solder braid to remove the extra solder. Remember to keep using fresh pieces of solder wick. I think that's as good as I'm gonna get, but I'm gonna go ahead and test for continuity between the pins that are next to each other all the way down this ribbon cable.
Everything looks good, none of these pins are bridged. Now with the RCB flex cable installed, we're gonna have to solder some wires to some of these pads right here. However, the places that we're gonna be soldering to might differ depending on the model of your N64. So I highly recommend you check out the N64 digital written instructions to see exactly where they're supposed to go on your model. I have a CPU 08 motherboard, so these steps are gonna be specifically for my N64. I'm gonna switch back to my chisel tip to solder the wires to that flex cable. First, let's tin the RC, CON, and RST pads on the flex cable. Cable. I'm going to use this nice silicon wire for this instead of my normal ribbon cable. First, let's solder this RC wire. So I'm going to cut a length of wire and I'm going to strip and tin it and then go ahead and solder it to the RC pad. We're going to be soldering this wire to pin 2 on the PIF chip here. So go ahead and tin it. I'm just going to line up the wire to that pin and cut it off. And I'm going to strip and tin it again and go ahead and solder that wire to pin 2. But now for this con pad, I'm going to have to solder a wire from this pad here all the way to this via over here on the left side here. And again, that's based on my motherboard revision. I don't think solder is going to stick directly to this pad without scratching some of the solder mask off. So I'm going to use my X-Acto knife to do that. Next, let's add a little bit of flux and try to tin that pad. Okay, same thing, cut a piece of wire and solder it onto the con pad. And on the other end, we're gonna measure and cut the wire. And then go ahead and solder it to the via. And finally, we're gonna solder a wire from this RST pad to pin 27 on the PIF chip. And there's a close-up of all the wires on my install. We're getting pretty close to the point where we can actually test our install, but we have to do a couple of things first. Flip the console over. Let's go ahead and solder this multi-out flux cable here on the multi-out. We'll add some liquid flux, and the flux cable is just gonna go in the first six holes right here. Let's add some solder to the first wire here. And then we'll do our best to kind of line it up. And with the flux cable lined up, let's go ahead and solder the rest. With all those pins soldered, let's go ahead and clean it off with some alcohol. And with the alcohol dry, let's go ahead and add this little foam piece. But since I'm using the no-cut pieces from Laser Bear, we're gonna have to go ahead and cut this foam in half. So I've got these little scissors, and go ahead and carefully cut this in half. Like that. Now just unstick it and add it to the board. Last thing we need to do while we're here is gently bend this little ribbon cable at this first diagonal line here. Okay, now we flip the board over again and we're gonna do the same kind of bend here with the RPC flex cable. With this flex cable bent like this, we're gonna have to take this little piece that's sticking off on the right side, and we're gonna need to solder it to this little leg on this chip right here that says five volts. I think this must be a voltage regulator, but I'm not positive. So go ahead and tin that five volt leg, and we can add a little bit of flux. Then we're gonna bend this little leg thing underneath of the flex cable, and then solder it onto that five volt leg. Now at the moment we're finished with the actual board itself, so go ahead and put that aside and bring in our N64 bottom shell. Since I'm doing the no-cut version of this mod, I'm gonna go ahead and add this little spacer piece in the bottom here. And now let's go ahead and drop in our mod. I've heard some people mention on Twitter that the mod actually kind of fits really tight in their N64, but this one actually has a tiny bit of play in it. 
but just be warned that yours might be a little bit of a tight fit. The Pixel FX Twitter account even mentioned that you might have to file some of the edges in some places if it doesn't fit in your N64. But do that at your own risk. I'm not responsible if you break your N64 digital. Okay, now it's time to bring our board back in. Since I'm doing the no cut mod, we're not gonna use that bottom shield. You just wanna leave the multi out flex cable kind of dangling, but make sure it doesn't get caught underneath and place the board in the case. Now let's go ahead and use the second diagonal line on the RPC flex cable to bend that flex cable back toward the mod itself. Again, make sure you don't crease it. And then open the connector here on the N64 digital mod. Carefully add the ribbon cable into that connector. And then push down on the locking clip. With this flex cable installed, the next thing we'll have to do is test for a short between ground and a 3.3 volt pad over here. But we need to do that with the expansion pack plugged in, as well as a cartridge and a controller in port one. With everything connected, take a look at this top left corner of the board here. I set my multimeter to continuity, and I'm gonna put one tip on this big ground pad right here, and the other one is going to go to this via right there. And it's a good thing if you do not have continuity. Now that I've tested that there's no continuity between this ground and 3.3 volts, the only thing left to do is hook up an HDMI cable and see if we get video and audio. And we're also gonna to wanna to test the on-screen display button combinations to see if those work too. But just be careful to not leave your N64 on for very long because there is no heat sink on any of the chips. I'm recording this after the fact, but this is what I did to test my N64 digital install. If you hold down both left and right and both right on the D-pad and the C-stick, it'll open up the N64 digital menu. Then I quickly use down to go down to system and then click R and then down to debug self-test and you should see eight hearts on these self-test options in this self-test menu. With the console tested and working, we're gonna do one last optional step. The N64 Digital can actually recreate the clock of both NTSC and PAL N64s. So all you have to do is lift this third leg on this chip right here and then solder this jumper and the N64 Digital can allow us to play games from our EverDrive from both NTSC and PAL regions. So I'm just gonna move this little wire out of the way. I'm gonna add a little bit of solder on that third leg just for good measure. And using the X-Acto knife, I'm gonna carefully try to lift the leg on that pin. And let me try to get a close up so that you can see this third leg lifted up on this chip. And then we just solder the jumper on the flex cable. Before we actually button everything up, we have to install the analog flex cable into this little connector right here. And with the help of my tweezers, I'm gonna bend on that other line there, the other diagonal line on the analog flex, and stuff the flex cable into that connector and push that connector down. Another thing I forgot to do is install this 3D printed piece from Laser Bear. And the last thing I'm gonna do before I start screwing things together is I need to add a piece of captain tape here on this top shield right about here. This piece of captain tape prevents against shorts on the flex cable here. With the install all set, let's go back into that menu and then go down to system and let's go into Wi-Fi. You're gonna start the setup wizard and then I'm gonna use my phone to scan this QR code to get my Wi-Fi set up. After scanning the QR code and clicking the join N64 HDMI button on my iPhone, I went over to Safari and I was able to use the Pixel FX Wi-Fi setup wizard to add my Wi-Fi to the N64 digital. After doing the Wi-Fi setup, it looks like the console restarted. So I'm gonna go back into the system menu and it looks like my Wi-Fi was set up under this Wi-Fi setup menu. So now I'm gonna go down to firmware and then I go check for an update and it looks like there's a new version available for download so let's click R to go to change log and then let's press R again to update the N64 digital. Now that the firmware is done installing let's go ahead and hit R to restart. It looks like now we're on the latest firmware. Thanks for watching my N64 digital install video. Give this video a like if it helped you install this mod in your N64. And get subscribed to the channel too so you don't miss any of my latest mod installation videos or my electronic products videos like my Xtron Crosspoint Auto Switcher. I'll see you in the next video. Ah!